my darlings, and welcome to the first, the second episode of Season 5 of Blood Bonding, the postseason show for ATL by Night. I am your host, Emily Thomas, and tonight is Ladies' Night with Hexadecimal, played by Renee Cooper, Thomasina, played by Leona Rohr, and Melisende, played by Brittany Trambauer-Smith. As a reminder, this is a postseason show, so there will be spoilers for content of Season 5. If you'd like to avoid spoilers, head on over to our YouTube channel to rewatch all of Season 5 and then come back right here to find out all the secrets few announcements don't forget to check out rustedicon.net for our renastri camarilla glasses they are beautiful red pint glasses with a symbol of the renastri camarilla on them don't forget to go to atlbynight.net for our lost childer play guide and also sponsor us on patreon.com for atl by night if you like the content we are making and for more links including our tea public and more atl by night content check out our link tree which should be posted in the chat right hi how is everybody thank you yeah, yeah. Glad to be here. Yeah, having a good Tuesday on this rainy Tuesday. It's raining where I am. I don't know if it's raining in y'all's parts of town. It, it doesn't know if it's raining. Yeah. Cloudy. Mm -hmm. but yeah. So it's been what a three weeks since the end of season. What are your characters been doing in off? Nope, nope. I speak English. What have your characters been doing in the off season? Ooh, uh, well, which one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> inclusive mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I'll let the others go first <laughs> so what have our characters been doing mm -hmm. yeah what's Hex up to oh huh. well uh, I'm probably freaking out and throwing myself into I would say work but probably just anything tech and distracting because uh, the last thing that happened was um, you know, two of our half, almost half, basically half our coterie got taken away. So, um, I'm probably going to be looking at like what's happening, maybe possibly spying on Alpha because he's just been increasingly shady and, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's probably been what's probably going on. I don't know where we're going to start in terms of like next season. So, uh, that's what I'm going to say. I've probably been doing and um, I have like Hex has like a part-time job um, or like a contract job that she's been doing that is kind of like my what I was doing in season four when I wasn't on so probably doing more of that so that I can get my mind off of everything crazy but also definitely spying on Alpha. Coping through work I like it. Mel? I, I know that I was told that I had to be his attorney. So I don't know if I was actually like, like drug off and like, I am his attorney and now I'm held captive until <laughs> otherwise. So like, I don't actually really know what I can and cannot do. But if I have free reign, it would be obviously uh, going over, you know, rules of evidence over and over again and reading various trials on certain things pouring over our, you know, Renashery Camarilla documents. Um, and then also trying to figure out what's going on with Mark, because he is really the only, you know, kind or really the only person I'm really that close to. I mean, I was close to Thomasina and kind of close to, kind of close to um, Anton, but, and getting closer to Hex, but he was definitely the person I was the closest to. And him not being there is going to be a real, um, could be a real struggle for her. Not 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 just because she's gonna feel incredibly unsafe, um, mm -hmm. but also because you know he she kind of relied on him for a lot of like moral support and warmth. You know, not that everybody else couldn't be warm. It's just that he was like literally warm, but also like you know figuratively <laughs> warm. Buddy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they didn't they didn't cuddle, but you know. Think, think like um, big brother energy, you know, that kind of yeah. like protective, you know, and, and her being, yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's about what I would say she's doing. I don't know if she's like captured or anything. So I don't know about that, but yeah. And then Thomasina and or all Tommy, because I don't know how much, Leona, do you know much about what Thomasina has been up to? Uh, potentially. Um, okay. I think we know uh, what's going on with her right now, um, but I'm not going to go into that yet because there's still some work on that. Um, but uh, it, it's nice. 
Um, well, it's interesting. Um, but with That's Altami, not concerning. <laughs> um, so I think Altami getting back to um, the bungalow with Jackson being like, I'm sure they'll have a great time. <laughs> they'll follow up. And then like rolling around to the next night and just like, where the hell are they? And then finding out like, oh, uh, <laughs> there's been an incident and there's an arrest. And I guess heck, like Hex and Aaron are gonna come back and be like, "Hey, stuff. Uh, it, there's there's things afoot. Um, I assume <laughs> that we're working on that, um, and working on um, just kind of getting our druthers again. Uh, I we've I I know that Al Tommy wants to um, go more into for trying to find uh, other Aaron." Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Ren, whichever name we're going with, yeah. Um, Axelmar. Axelmar. yeah. Um, I know that we're like she wants that, um, but it's also very much like a I know that I can't find Axnor without this coterie, so there's a lot that's tied up in the next couple of incidents between Mel and Anton, so yeah. So this Does Axnor sort of... know we named him Axnor, like in the game? I don't know that he... I don't think he knows it in character. Well, I think he's that gonna know, be because good. he has to also be on the Kingdom Hearts game. Yes. Well, and that's totally a reference from one of the chats. Um, plug for our Discord and our play-by-post where people chat about the show live. But uh, the other names for Altami before Altami named herself were Mephizanax, um, Fomacina. Yep. Um... I think there was one where they just changed the letter, like how you get like the Chamel bags instead of Chanel. (laughs) Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So you all sort of touched on the Succubus Club a little bit. And that was our big closing event for season five. What was your character's biggest fear and also your biggest fear as a player going into the Succubus Club? What were you most scared was going to (laughs) happen? I thought I was going to be found out for the pile of bugs that I am. <laughs> now, now, don't call yourself a pile of bugs. You're a well-formed humanoid of bugs. I'm a thieving colony, yes. <laughs> he's, she's bugs. She's, you're she's actually, a pile of bugs. You're a roiling soul of bugs. Yes, she's oh. Oogie Boogie. <laughs> Prettier than Oogie Boogie, but still it's very Oogie Boogie-like. You are but the cutest is. Oogie Boogie I ever did see. Yeah, and Ellie and I did talk about. Um, she was thinking about the the beetles that are probably inside of Altami are probably golden tortoise beetles. Um, and I was like, I think I know what she's talking about. And I looked it up. I was like, Yeah, that's it. That's the one. Um, so uh, it's very pretty for like a half a second, and then bugs is the general reaction. So, um, so yeah, that was my fear. What about y'all? <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna let Brittany go first because. I know that I'm having trouble with my audio, so I'm looking for my headphones. That's why I'm looking very distracted. So, like, oh, you want to go okay. first? I, I definitely want to make sure that I have these on my calendar. Yeah, I mean, Mel is just, without Mark, generally, she feels pretty unsafe, like, physically, right? So, like, that's a thing. Um, but I don't really think she was scared of much because she went in really fucking pissed. So like I I I would say scared not so much uh, personally as a player because I had spoken out of character with some of my coterie as well as a storyteller about like what where's the line where am I gonna be staked like slash executed because. I had a feeling after me and Hex talked that it was very likely that Mel was going to act out. And it, it was great that she had the introduction of stimulants because it made it that much more likely that the things that I was thinking she might do, she could possibly do. But I would say I'm not even really sure who to think for the fact that it didn't work out other than there just happened to be the perfect set of circumstances that she came down at least enough not to like try to execute alpha 
or try like yeah. try like go and just say a bunch of really terrible awful nasty shit to him or somebody else on the council uh, I mean like that was my right that was my like goal going in I was like how disrespectful can I be because it is police <laughs> and and so I got kind of a line but not really a line so I was like well I'm, I just I said I set up on on Storyteller and I was like I mean I might be off the show after tonight I'm just I don't I don't really know what to expect so I'm just letting you know like and then you add the cocaine and then the I shit get the myself man. executed just <laughs> just seeing so uh so I mean I she sobered up real quick after that you know being you know however captured or whatever by the by the prince but impressed yeah Ingress so into a legal position yeah so uh so yeah so uh wasn't scared personally I was scared of what Mel would do because I don't really want to be off the stream like I wasn't like looking for an out really but there was every possibility that y'all may not have seen me again after that night because I was like well maybe Mel gets killed we'll see how it goes Mel <laughs> disappeared like Aaron maybe Mel comes back a pile of bugs <laughs> well the next one was apparently supposed to be me so yeah. <sighs> um so <laughs> Yeah, me and Mel actually talked a little beforehand and were like, so like, how are you feeling about basically like Camarilla after this? And I'm like, you know, I'm feeling a little, I'm not very interested in Sabat. And she's like, yeah, I'm feeling a little anarch. And I was like, well, I guess maybe we'll just figure out what happens after this. And then going into it, Storyteller, like when we already started, Storyteller was like really pushing into remember when you died remember how you died remember how like you probably didn't die the way you think you died I was like okay so let's go into this with some trauma PTSD yeah. and um and then it just turned out that I didn't get a chance I, I lost my chance to engage I mean I got drunk which is good but I lost my chance to engage because I was like I'm gonna go to the dance floor and then it's like all right as you go out Doc comes in and I was like, what? And she's like, nope, you're already on the dance floor. And I was like, okay, this is probably safest. So um, I definitely thought there would be some sort of confrontation and, uh, but it couldn't have gone too far because Elysium. So I was kind of like understanding from Mel's standpoint, like there can be a lot of words probably spoken and, but there's not really anything we can do physically to, to like, hurt so it just sets up for the next thing and then I never even really got a chance to talk to Dot um, about anything and um, kind of hearing Meta how she's already kind of anticipating a conversation it's like all right well that's gonna go however it goes I'm not as strong as Dot but like I definitely wanted to fight somebody so at some point like <laughs> That may we'll no, no, we'll help you out. Somebody. We'll we'll help you out. Get, we'll be we'll be there'll be some fighting happening. Once we get this point drop, I gotta figure out what physical ability I'm putting it into because it's gonna be something gnarly. I'm, I'm getting with an awareness because I keep failing with an awareness rolls. It's if I we somebody could go back <laughs> and do a so everybody but hex, <laughs> like it's definitely happened multiple times. Get yourself get so. yourself a spec. <laughs> yeah. So. an awareness specialty for seeing all the things right can i just like have something that if i if everybody but hex at least i notice that everybody but hex and so even if i don't notice the thing i notice that i'm the only one who's not noticing a thing that, that must be a role somehow or like a spec i can get i mean i've been like half contemplating like do i just throw myself at fucking um uh, help me out bad guy beard mustache why can't i think of his name right Alejandro. Alejandro. Do I just throw myself at Alejandro and be like, give me your stuff. Give me the things. I'll be your child or I don't care. Like, just, just give me something because Mel is like done with playing games by the rules, right? Like she spent literal centuries trying to do things the right way and, and skirting around the issues and helping people persuade them to make the right decision. And I think she's fucking had it. That'd be you know? interesting because oblivion's a hell of a tree mm. oblivion's oh. a hell of a drug <laughs> yeah exactly it's, I don't mean, so interesting fun fact about oblivion if you roll a 10 or a 1 on a rouse check 
you have to take a stain or you have to yeah you have to take a stain on your humanity yep yeah well somber are already at a disadvantage on humanity stuff dang fun fact <laughs> not that your characters would know that but that's a mechanical thing we've been messing with on the play by post yep um so you know moving to a lighter topic what was your f character's favorite snack comfort snack before embrace Mel, did we have snacks? <laughs> yeah. It's like street food in uh you guys are like meat. It was good to Mel have meat. I bear I mean, like, I wasn't I did not I was not well bred. So I did not have the luxury of food when I needed it a lot of times. No. So I don't know, just having bread, like being able to eat something that was, you know, like just having something was probably yeah. her favorite. Her comfort was that eating that she had food you know her comfort was food yeah food <laughs> just know. getting it mm, i'm gonna say teddy grams the chocolate ones those are good yeah also, or like the dunkable the dunkables no no the ones that are like so i'm saying this because this is something i liked as a kid and i think that this would be a good grown-up like college cram sort of like I'm gonna treat myself but it's the ones that are like the chocolate cookies they're very small maybe is that what you're talking about they're like this big and like I guess you can dunk them but how I used to eat them was to pour them all in a bowl with milk and I ate them like cereal and my parents just oh. let me do that I mean it's not far off of cereal it's very far off of cereal it's cookie it's cookies it's I mean, not in a world where cookie crisp exists is it that far off of cereal <laughs> you're you're right and I, that's probably what they thought too they're probably like a million grams of sugar a million grams of sugar we're just gonna buy the teddy grams and i used to eat that and it's so good and if you guys ever just want to love something you should eat chocolate teddy grams like cereal it can't be the cinnamon ones it can't be the honey ones it has to be the cinnamon. chocolate ones. I'm going to just say. Toast crunch, though. The cinnamon ones are probably good. So we just, I just gave my son, who's eight months old, his first, like, cookie, like, teething cracker to start munching on. And in my head, I'm thinking, the texture of those things with milk is probably going to be the same. And I instantly don't want it. <laughs> I instantly don't want it. It definitely like they they kind of fall apart. You know, it's like eating an Oreo after you put it in the milk. So if you don't like that, you're not. No. Gonna, but they're so chocolatey. Like they have this very chocolatey taste. So yeah, that was definitely uh, uh, old Hex's favorite snack. If she's like in the middle of the night, she can just go. And they probably sell those at like the convenience store. So you just get some milk and convenient. Put the cookies right into the thing of milk and just like drink it. Yeah. Yeah. And then for Thomasina, I think if I remember when she was embraced, I think there would have been like fried donut type thing, fried egg type things, like type of sweet stuff, kebabs from the Moorish influence. Um, that was less of a thing in um in Talavera. Um in Talavera you had uh, a big thing was eel. Um, oh. when she was growing up, I mean, she, um, she wasn't embraced until she was about like 32, 33. Um, and prior to that, like until she was 19, she and her mom were still very, very poor. Um, they were starting to gain some money or she was starting to gain some money in a couple of different ways. Um, she liked apples. She liked peaches a lot. Um, but it was just kind of what happened to be available um and then she probably didn't have like eel as a viable like food that wasn't like jellied or pickled or something like that mm -hmm. which did exist um until uh she had had her own place um and she was big big into that um so it's been a while since she had that and like little eels they're 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 good i promise they're not weird at all they're very weird actually um and oh, then if you like if you like a sushi eel it's probably very si it's not the same it's not the same type of eel but it's probably yeah. a similar texture yeah um and it's kind of um there's a lot of pepper that's usually in there or um there's a lot of i mean i mean like chili kind of a thing um yeah. or um sometimes there's a lot of sometimes they're brined and pickled that kind of thing um and yeah it depends like especially if you have it with um certain kinds of breads those are great um 
but uh, she also, she had a couple of spaces out in um, Galicia um, where octopus was a big thing. And so she's like, eels and octopus. She loves the weird stuff that is, I mean, it is a delicacy. Like there, there's she a comfort. like the weird stuff. Sorry, I had well, to do that. Well, there's comfort for her in having something that she knows this is sick, but that's something that she knows other people can't have. She's that's a very Ventrue feel. That's a very Thomasina yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that makes sense that tracks yeah um yeah. and then what is one food that you discovered after em- after embrace that you wish you could really try as a human because like after embrace your tastes are all kind of deadened right and a little bit like everything tastes ashy yeah um i wish i could still eat things with garlic that'd be nice oh. mm-hmm. it makes ordering pizza very difficult and people look at you funny like why do you want to order pizza but I still can remember, even if I can't taste it exactly the same, like there's a memory of certain things that I I feel like I hold on to. Like, yeah, I remember when I ate this really good one at this place. Because I still eat. (laughs) Vanilla cream horns. That would definitely be. Vanilla cream what? Horns. The like pastries, the really light pastries where they put the vanilla cream inside of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be a thing because there are pastries kind of similar to that you know from France but nothing exactly like that especially not the ones that are super saccharine now like the ones that are just like crazy sweet and like you know that they are processed heavily and there's a whole lot of stuff in them that isn't real but I think that for for for, uh, for Mel the sweet tooth if she had one would be as a result of never having had the opportunity or not often having the opportunity as a kind to actually indulge in anything outside of the bare minimum to survive. So like, I see it as the sweets being like her reminder to herself, if she could have them, that she has made it, she can eat when she needs to. She is like, it's not for survival. Now, granted, I mean, it's still for survival, but it's it's different now, you know? So if if she could eat, it'd be that thing because to her, it would be kind of a, of a, you know, like a indication that she had made it, you know? she's no longer begging on the street you know that kind of thing one of our well, oh someone in chat just said mel gonna make me emotional over pastries <laughs> i think um thomasina oddly enough it's boiled peanuts she's fascinated by the idea and just like as she knows it's a thing and that's all it's just like oh that is a thing that everyone else can experience but me and so she's low-key jealous about that <laughs> she's jealous of this like Cheap southern food. food. I love it. It's not food. good, okay? It's like the oh, opposite. Oh, we're going to fight. Eel. We will fight. I will defend bull peanuts. Yeah. That's like oh, the yeah. opposite They're of the eel. They're slimy. Thing. They are mm-hmm. slimy. The shells are I'm slimy, but the peanuts like other aren't slimy. <laughs> this is true. I love slimy. Slimy's great. Um, But yeah, no, she, that's <laughs> very much something that she was just like, well, I want can't, damn it. Like, <laughs> everything can't you else just- is like, just hold it just hold it in in your hands and that's what it tastes like that's really if you can feel then you know what it tastes like that's well but that's only not spicing it like i feel like that's the the thing is that there's a lot of people that forget that you can add flavor (laughs) to it and you can boil peanuts in beer it's amazing you can can boil them there in broth you can boil them in like oh yeah there's so much you can do there's so much half the chat's like you know it's such a peanuts. Like peanuts are fine. Just eat peanuts. Yeah. Roast them, put salt on them, just eat them. I like them boiled. It's that moment where the juice squirts out when you break Ooh. open the shell. Yeah. 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 Leona yeah. knows. Where oh, you just- that's that's just nasty. I don't <laughs> like that. <laughs> that's right, folks. We're gonna get banned by Twitch over peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> And you heard that right. She said peanuts. Mm-hmm. Peanuts. I'm enunciating. <laughs> Listen, I know. Have I know. Peanut, either way, it's boiled. Um, go on. Um, so this one's an interesting one. We know Aaron has a list of the order that he'd kill the coterie in. What order would your character do it? We do? We know yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, it was dropped at the table. <laughs> yeah, that was season two or three. Yeah, I think it was two. It was when he got the blood bag um, in in the Athenium. He like Anton was Anton was trying to keep the blood bag from him. And he goes, "Look, 
I just need you to know I would take you first, then you, then you, then you. Give me yeah. the bag. And it's like, it was a great <laughs> moment of Aaron angry. But what yeah, would you tell you your character killed him? <laughs> I have to go back and watch that because I'm like, what? But I wasn't there. I need, so I need clarification. Does that yeah. include non-coterie members who are on the stream or are we just talking our actual coterie members? I have a different question for non-coterie members. All right. All right. Oh. <laughs> I have okay. <laughs> All right. I can I'll go ahead and answer because I can tell everybody else's wheels are turning. So it would go, <clears throat> Aaron. Hex, Thomasina, Anton. And the reason being is I am, or Hex, or Hex, Mel would be ramping it up by what she considered their difficulty to murder, right? And it's not saying that everybody doesn't have great strength because they do. But the reason why she puts Anton at the end is because of all that magical shit that he can do that she does not understand, doesn't want to, right? Like she's seen it all her life, but does not want to understand it. That to her is like the pinnacle of, I do not want to fuck with that unless I have to, right? Yeah, she's going for the max murder count. She's going for, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to kill as many people as I can and then get out of here. Right. So, and then, you know, obviously Thomasina, old, strong, you know, hex, strong, but she likes Hex, so she doesn't want to. So that's why it happens, I guess, early. I don't know. And then Aaron, because he's just such a nice guy, I don't think that she, like, puts into her mind that he is very strong physically, although we all know that he is, like, like a Hulk. But, like, for, for Mel, she's like, well, fuck, he's a nice guy. I'll, you know, if she was in the murder mindset, right? That's kind of where I, that's kind of what I think. Hmm. Yeah. How about Thomasina? And if all Tommy has a different answer, I'd be curious to know that. I'm thinking about that too. <laughs> so Thomasina, um, very practical. She would try and kill the most dangerous first, um, given the situation. Um, so if it's in, if she's really backed into a corner, um, it depends. She'll probably end up coercing whoever may be the of the most benefit to killing the rest mm -hmm. go with the largest problem first then the next and then towards the end like whoever it is that she's kind of coerced into helping her um getting them um so it depends um i think the biggest threat is always going to be serious no matter what um and i think with and probably Anton after that but it's weird because I think that's going to swap out sometimes with Aaron Aaron is an older um and he he is strong but he's also such a freaking wild card um I think Mel I would Mel I'm sorry but she would probably end up co trying to coerce you into helping her <laughs> Um, kill the others and then probably dispatch of you and then try to try and keep like hex very safe and like oh someone's killing everybody we should eventually always needs eventually always needs either a pet bruja or a pet gangrel mm -hmm. <laughs> but then like, after that it's just like oh no hex they're all dying we need to run and then kill him um al tommy give me a minute on that one hex what are your answers I'm so upset. Okay, so obviously, <laughs> obviously, Aaron's going first because he is the most, as as I've learned now, he's the wild card and he already has a list. So I think he needs to be first. Um, then Anton, then Thomasina, then Mel. And that's because uh, Anton also is scariest. So if anybody's going to start doing some weird stuff, what, am I diabolizing these people or am I just killing them? That, is, that would probably be up to y'all. So oh. you know, like, I don't think Diablory was part of the original question, but like you could definitely include it. Oh no. Oh, I forgot about Sirius. Okay, so um yeah, Sirius. I can't forget about Sirius. Whew, yeah. Uh I would Diablorize Sirius and then I would so Sirius is first. Then I would I would Diablorize everybody. I might as well. If they're all going, then I'm gonna go with two. So I would take everybody yes. out, everyone get Diablorize and go all Sirius in. first. <laughs> then uh for the cunningness, and then I'm gonna get uh Aaron for the uh, gangrel kind of strength. And then I'm taking out Anton because of magic stuff. And he's also very scary sometimes. It's gonna be hard because 
I'm friends with everybody. Um, Thomasina's next because I also think that I would want to save oh, Mel for last because that's going to be like the hard, like both Thomas, both the girls are going to be hard, but it's like, if I'm going to go through one, I probably, but to, if Mel was fighting me back, I probably would have to go to Mel first, but in order to gain enough experience and craziness to fight Mel, I would have to go through Thomasina first and get your, whatever you've got and use that okay. for the final boss, final fantasy style. Altami, I think, originally designated either Hex or Anton as a primary threat. Um, Hex, almost certainly, because um, of what ha happened. Um, so Hex might be her first target. Um, but the problem then becomes Anton. Um, so it would need to be in such a situation that she very much made that look as though this was an outsider that did it. Um, pull Anton into investigating it, kill him. Um, then, assuming Aaron is there, um, Aaron would probably figure out what was going on pretty quickly, and she'd have to kind of face that. Uh, but she'd have to face it on her terms. Um, I'm not certain that would be a huge success, but if it were, um, Mel would then be last. Okay. Mel, you're lost on everybody's list. We just want to keep you around, Mel. <laughs> like, we can't. It's funny because I'm like the least, I, I would say of all of the people, I'm probably the least physically strong. Like, I mean, I, I picked up some great skills last season, like really baller, like yeah, defense. Yeah, of rage. Yeah, well, no, Spark of Rage is, like, the first thing I picked up. Like, it's the second thing I ever got. But, like, uh, yeah, Spark of Rage, she's used since she was a, a baby kindred. Like, she, that, that is, that is how the Haitian Revolution started, in case anybody wants to know. Uh, <clears throat> but, um, but, uh, yeah, the, the stuff she picked up was the, um, the, the defense stuff. So she picked up, like, the flesh of marble at the top, top of it, and, um, so she can defend herself pretty decently, but even, even then, like Earth Shock being the most powerful thing she can do, it's still a hard role. You know, it's not one of those things where she can just use it. And everybody else has great physical abilities that they can just use with very little role capacity or very little damage, or not damage, but very little difficulties, you know. I don't really have that. And I don't think that I would ever give Mel that because I feel like it takes away the integrity for me of the character being more cerebral and more like humanity based than really just having a bunch of crazy physical skills. I doubt she, she can do the things she needs to do when she needs to do them. But when it comes to the coterie, like the strength that they all have is I would say pretty exponentially more than hers. Well, I think the assumption there that you would have to physically overwhelm anyone or specifically physically overwhelm Mel is the, like, no, absolutely not. I'm not even going to try, either for all Tommy or Thomasina. There's a hundred other ways to kill her, and I'm not going to bare knuckle duke it out with Mel either way. So, yeah, that's... Yeah. Well, and what you mentioned, that sort of brings up one of the questions that I had. So this season, we've seen a lot more of Mel's Bruja abilities and her disciplines and a couple more of her Bruja tendencies, like at the Succubus Club, where she just kind of wanted to punch someone in the face and see if she could get away with it. Um, is she leaning into being kindred and sort of like leaning into that Bruja nature? Or is she trying to like corral her beast into a useful ally? Oh, you're mute. So... That's a great question. And I think it really is just a storyteller has kind of led me down the primrose path to kind of make that be a bigger part of her as a, as a player. But the way I could, I could say that that logically is the way in which she's going is that Mel is not used to not having diplomatic control over situations, right? Like she is very used to like, I know how to persuade people. I know how to move them. I, I am well known for knowing to move them. I am well known for people being able to come around to my side. And when things just start continually happening against her, where she has zero control over it, 
that is when the beast really for her now granted you know she's a bruja so the beast is always there it's always there you know we have the things that make us ragey and what have you but in her case it's that lack of of control I mean you know I'm maxed out on politics I'm maxed out on leadership I'm maxed out on on that kind of stuff which is really great for stuff that has to do with the court and really great for all the politicking and all that stuff but when all that fails and all that stuff that she spent, you know, hundreds of years building and being good at is failing, then what, then, then, then to her, it's like, what's the point of even leaning into my humanity anymore? Because none of that's working. So I might as well just be a fucking animal. Okay. So. Interesting. So, and Hex, you've mentioned a lot, you've sort of danced around the dot issue. <laughs> The big, yeah. the big issue of Dorothy, Dorothy, uh, last name redacted. Hex went through a lot this season. What was going through your head when Dot used dominate abilities on her? Uh, what was going through Renee's head? Because through yeah. Hex's yeah. head, it was whatever Dot put there. Um, <clears throat> I was, of course, I thought it was a really good story, like, story aspect like I remember going home and I was talking to my roommate and I was like I always do that because the room is right by where I come in I was like this is what happened on the show in case you didn't watch it today um but you should probably watch it um so I was really excited and I was talking about it and I was like amongst everything else that is happening like I got my mind wiped and uh you know Hex is like really missing out now on some like key information so I'm thinking like how is this going to play out going forward because I was I was really excited and I was planning on um, confronting confronting Aaron a little bit earlier. And I was happy when I got the information from uh, Sybil and Pippa. So I was a little disappointed when that information got got swabbed. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I just play dumb. But it was exciting because I didn't well, I don't play dumb. Like, I just don't remember. But it's exciting because when those things would come up, it gave me opportunities to be like, oh, what are you talking? Wait a minute, something's not clicking. And I need you guys to kind of know like something's not clicking with me um, because A is not equaling three. And I feel like we've already been here, but we have, you know, this whole like deja vu, what, is, what am I missing sort of thing. So, um, so I was just really excited for it from a storytelling aspect. And um, I don't like, I, I don't do a lot of like acting or anything. So I felt like this gave me a good, it was fun to, to play. Like, it, it's really like a game. Like this is you a game. The table. So, yeah. So it don't was do that. a lot of acting. I don't, do I? I don't. You yeah. had to say, yeah. Here's Wait. the thing. We <laughs> talk about this on other, on other blood bondings. And I'm just going to say it again. And Thomasina or, or, um, you, you are <laughs> you are a literal like expert in acting so you can you know tell me if I'm wrong but it's very misner of us to just be reactionary as we would react right and then it, then it is still acting but it's not acting as somebody other than ourselves is that is that kind of the way it is I mean kind of so we're so there's so much detail and there's so much ingrained in what we have and I mean any of like your Adler or uh, Meisner or like any like even Chekhov like there's a lot of it that's more bound to a script a lot of people will say that there are there's a lot of improv things that you can really draw from in Meisner I personally don't think I had enough of that experience when I was taking when I did my two years mm -hmm. um, but I do know that there's so much background that each of us has and I, I will remember that my instructor would say, you know, it's it's like having loose change in your pocket that you can kind of feel and you're aware of, um, but it's not really relevant until you need to spend it. Um, all of a sudden, you need to kind of scrape together however much money. Um, and so each of us has so much built into our characters, but partially by virtue of the game itself, partially by the company that we keep, um, and then just the interest that we've each found in each character. Uh, so that makes all of those reactions that much more genuine um, and that oh that was very much the same for me this season so yeah 
acting to an extent, but like, yeah, no, Renee, you've definitely had so much that was thrown at you this season and watching you, especially like starting immediately to jump in and just, I need to get all the information that I can on this. That's partially you partially hacks and to a certain extent just a very nosferatu thing of needing to be as well informed as you could possibly be partially for no, like a nosferatu's safety in a given situation also the nosferatu yeah. compulsion yeah. yeah yeah i have to know so um <clears throat> but yeah it was it was definitely it's definitely been fun playing this and this has been um definitely one of the longest tabletop game I've ever I've ever played and uh I I very much enjoyed that um there was so much happening I, it made me feel like my my princessy heart is like I love looking at the reactions and they're just like Hex has that main character energy and I'm just like bless thank you but like I, there's like a, a bunch of us were like I feel it like I'm trying um so uh yeah it's just it's it's fun and it's exciting to see where where it will go because yeah i was i was definitely mad i feel like more people i think other people were more mad <laughs> at dot um because i still feel like you know sh she's mom but also yeah it's comp it's very complicated because she is a strong character with a goal and i don't necessarily know that now that my humanity is over, that I don't like, that I don't like that. Like, why not at this point? Like, I'm 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 vacillating. Like, why not lean into maybe whatever her plans are? Because like, what else? What else is there? Um, I mean, there's always something else. But like, maybe in this moment, this is what it's going to be. And it's very eye opening to hear from uh, Coda, and she's just like everybody's a liar and a cheater and, and you know like all all the amps are bad well and i mean that's why you and i were talking out of character about like how are we just are we running away tonight like are we going yeah. anarch? like what are we gonna do like what's the plan because we're gonna, both of us are just fed up we're like Thelma and louise we're like opposite we're like she's going anarch and i'm going to the bot and we're just like arm <laughs> in arm just like taking out Camarilla as we go. <laughs> I feel like that would be really, and then at the end, we're just like, well, I guess I'll see you. I'll see you. <laughs> see you in the next sector. Hey. I know, right? Hey. <laughs> um, so there's a couple of questions that we did get about Altami. Mm -hmm. um, Leona, how much thought did you put into planning out Altami's outfits for Thomas, for pretending to be Thomasina? And what was Altami's favorite thing about being Thomasina? Uh, so she, one thing I did make for her uh, was a tiny thing and that was that she was uncomfortable having hair down on her neck. She doesn't like it. Um, just as a, like a tiny sensory thing, she likes to have her hair up. Um, and there wasn't as much that was changed about the outfits because she was essentially stealing from Thomasina's closet, but, uh, so there was a scene on the play-by-post um, that was um, between me and Anton, and for her looking into Thomasina's closet, I think it was something like this was someone who wanted to project the idea that they could endure anything, and that's to her that's like overdoing it. So she thinks that like Thomasina's too much, um, <laughs> and, which, is, which is true. Wow. Um, but, uh, for her, the thing that she's liked the most about being Thomasina is, um, and it's a, tr it's a tricky thing. Um, she's liked the amount of agency that Thomasina seems to have. Um, she has not had that. She has been in her very short life brought up by the SI. Um, so all of her, you know, training and all of the feedback and the critiquing and all of that that's happened in her tiny bit of life where they were trying to get her, you know, suited for going out and being this agent. Mm -hmm. um, that was suddenly taken away and it's just like, oh, so now you're just going to be out there with these kindred or with these blanks. Um, and uh, you kind of have to work with what you've got, which is a lot, but 
we won't be constantly giving you feedback anymore. You won't constantly be in communication. Um, and that's kind of the whole, like, it's a little bit that super isolated homeschooled preacher's kid suddenly going off to college. It's a little bit of that. Um, but it's also, you know, seeing this person who has very much made their own life and very clearly has done so with some regard to what other people think of her, but otherwise very much still does what she wants. She's liked the idea of someone that comfortable with who they are because she's not, she's not thoroughly comfortable with who she is. Um, and like she's not she, comfortable she, being being made of bugs, or she's not comfortable. She's with, not like well, a vacancy. She, she's not comfortable with the fact that she. I mean, she used to get pretty regular feedback on any, you know, she kind of was kind of given like points, so to speak. You know, anytime you know she was tested on anything, and you know they were saying whether or not she was going out to the field. Um, you know, there was a little bit of that, like, I did good, yay! Um, there wasn't necessarily a gold star, but um, there was feedback and people telling her, you know, whether what she did was right or wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so now, not having that feedback all the time, it's, I don't know if what I'm doing is right or wrong, I just know if it's achieving a goal. So okay. all of the little steps of what she was supposed to do, she knows that she can tick stuff off of a list, but the real, she wasn't encouraged to develop a personal relationship with anyone. So there's a personality that's there. It's just in conjunction with a very complicated set of circumstances now. So for Thomasina, who is someone who very much knows what she personally is or isn't okay with um and she's the one who makes that decision you know she looks up to that and she wants that um but she's only been out of the si for a few months so which is a lot for her but she doesn't quite have that agency yet and it's it's difficult so yeah mm -hmm. on a completely different note <laughs> Um, I mentioned that I did have a question for the non-Shepherd new players on the table. How is everyone in character feeling about Jackson, Sybil, Peppa, um, especially given their connections to present and former spot? And do you trust them? Do you think they're a danger to the Shepherds? Like, how how are we, how are, how are we, the collective we of the table feeling? I'm going to answer that because no, <laughs> I, 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 you know, think everybody being on is great because building the stream out creates this, this like rich universe for everybody to play in. Mel likes none of them. Um, she really, really dislikes Sybil and Pippa, like just bar none dislikes them. Um, but she really disliked, uh, disliked Jackson because he was just so arrogant. Like, it's one thing to be, you know, um, she gets that vibe from Anton every now and then because he kind of gets a little, like, a little condescending, a little, pa you know, a little patronizing, and that really irks her. But, like, just the way Jackson was, he was just so fucking arrogant. And, and Mel, like, in her head was thinking, you fucking child, like, I could literally split you in half right now. Like, what are you talking, like, why are you here, you know, kind of thing. And having... <clears throat> built this coterie the way that we did, which was we basically fell into each other, right? We fell into each other trying to, the, the very first episode, second episode, like fell into each other, trying to build this case together and like have had to go through nearly literal hell together. And this Joe Blow off the fucking street can just roll up in here thinking that he can have our key card and just like, you know, have run the place. And Mel really resented that, you know, partially because to her, there should be a barrier to entry to this group because we all had to had to run through circles of fire in order to, to be a part of this. We've all had to take shots for each other and we've all had to sacrifice. And Jackson just rolls up in here, you know, and is able to, to be a part of it. And I think she doesn't like, she, she really was upset with Anton for even like placating this child. You know, that's the way she sees it. But then Jackson becomes this selfless, strong-ass figure. And Mel is like, 
okay, I'm a dick. Like I was wrong. Like she really like truly in game had to be like, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Like, you know, you're, you're really being a jerk right now. And, um, if there's anything Mel can do most of the time, it's self-reflect about, you know, and, and, and be, be told that she was wrong sometimes on certain things. And on this thing, she was proven with empirical evidence that she was wrong about him. And so now she trusts him and she doesn't necessarily like him yet, but she trusts him, you know, the other two, I mean, they're literal or are, they're basically, um, you know, they're actual shadows, but they're, to her, they're just, you know, she, she sees them as um, nuisances and as double agents and as, you know, like gaping holes in security. And yeah. that's really it. There, there is no personal connection whatsoever there other than they are absolutely not welcome in her presence. Oh. And that's going to be the way it's going to be until, until they, they have a Jackson moment where they, you know, prove that they, you know, deserve to be part of the group. That, that's just, that's Mel. That's totally Mel. It's not me. I think everybody's sure. great. I'm so glad. Sure. But <laughs> yeah. Mel, like, Mel, is kind, Mel is kind of a snob about, not about like people being good enough to be a part of the group, but about you having to pay your dues, right? Like you got to pay your dues. And all the people on this call or all the people in, in the coterie, we paid our fucking dues, you know? And these young kids get to roll up in here and not only are they kids, but they also are former Sabat. So it's like, well, so, so one of them is former Sabat. No, but yeah. no, but she is, she's Alejandra. just as bad as anybody else. She's an Alejandra yeah. child, you know? But, yeah. She's, you know, she's this many, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> this many. right. And maybe. And with both, <laughs> like, it's funny. So Sybil and Pippa very much remind Thomasina of girls that she used to run with back when she was still running, like a bunch of scams when she was in her like late teens, early twenties. And when she started getting money. So for her, like those two, especially after the wrestling thing, it was like, oh, I know I can depend on both of these, or, or at least like, I know I can depend on some of their proclivities. Um, I can't necessarily depend on them thoroughly, but I can depend on, you know, I can depend on, C C or um, I can depend on Pippa for ravenously needing to get answers to certain questions. And I can depend on Sybil to point out the glaring holes in everyone's plan. Um, and then with Jackson, ooh, like that was, I did not foresee the interaction that was going to happen there. Um, that one was very much from the get go, uh, kind of enemy of my enemy thing, which is what Thomasina wants to believe at minimum. She wants to believe that this is someone that she can rely on because she's so sick of constantly turning around and realizing like, oh, I'm surrounded by people that are about to betray me. So she's clinging to the idea that Jackson very much has a direction that is at least not a direct threat to her. Um, and then when the whole, you know, finding out that she had vicissitude thing came around, um, that was a reaction I didn't anticipate. And I didn't anticipate that she would feel so completely lost, out of control, and that talking to him when he was just trying to help her and she had been open enough to ask for help was just floodgates. Um, so Jackson for Thomasina is still being evaluated, um, but she's felt like there's more of him that she's able to rely on to not hurt her directly. Um, I think I would have liked Sybil and Pippa more if my brain hadn't gotten wiped. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I am, so now, uh, let's say jury's still out on this one. I, I definitely did not like people in the house. I think I made that pretty clear in the beginning of the series season when I was, um, talking to anybody. You? Yeah, exactly. You. exactly. This was supposed to be a secure compound. Right. With blood um, horses. That like my mom found. So, it, you know, it's like my house, my like kind of, I feel like a certain way about this. So, but during our interaction, I think I like actually our only interaction. <laughs> um, 
I think I, I had decided that I could see a friendship between them two and I could, I could tell Sybil was, I don't know if I could, if I knew how strong physically and like on the hierarchy she was because of Alejandro, but I could tell she had her wits about her. And so if she trusted Pippa, I was like, okay, I think that this, that this duo may be trying to help. So, but now that's out the window. So I don't know. Um, now I'm just like, now I kind of hate them. So I'm just like, they came to my house talking, trying to, you know, talk to me about their Lord and Savior Sabat. And I don't really feel that even though now I think I do have more questions because I'm just like, well, like, why is everybody always all Sabat? Like, what, what is the big deal about it? Why is my mom so anti Sabat? But then everyone's telling me she is Sabat. And, you know, what do these people, what do people know about it that I don't know? And I think it's still kind of weird. The whole Hex thinks that it's like kind of like a like an old boys club but it's just built of people who are like old vampires who are like oh i'm the bishop i'm the blah blah blah, blah, blah. i'm the queen Consider, and they're like you could always yeah. go bahari and join a lilith cult instead <laughs> if i did research oh, on that which oh, is probably no. what i'm doing oh no have i interested <laughs> mel in a <laughs> don't don't go well uh, we can talk about bahari or not uh Talking about Bahari powers might get us banned on Twitch. Yep. I am very impressed. I'm a very impressionable young vampire at this point. So I am like in a, I literally am in a, uh, what do you call that? Like a job fair because the current job I have is a, a little treacherous. My bosses are crazy. Like there's a lot going on. My mom tried to kill me. So like, or did kill me uh, and turn me. So I'm bringing that back to Sybil and Pippa. I think I would have trusted them more, but now I don't know, but they obviously are good sources of information that I probably need to re revisit, um, especially because I definitely need answers on what happened that day. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously Jackson like came in like a wrecking ball and we were like, no, we don't want to be your friend. Don't come to our house. Like, why are you, why? <laughs> I'm asking everybody, why did you let Jackson come over? Like he could have been that friend, Sorry, just leave no. him. <laughs> leave him at visualizing ian riding one of the <laughs> crane wrecking <laughs> balls through you're the welcome <laughs> you're welcome but like i didn't understand like just leave him at the school like i didn't understand why he had to like come to oh but he didn't he came to our house so he knew how to find us anyway but i blame anton and aaron for that like how did he know how to find us so um but it also could be just literally Easy everything's going anton. on <laughs> Yeah, it's really easy to just blame Anton for it. Um, you know, I take out Aaron. I don't blame Aaron. I definitely only blame Anton. Um, but but everything was happening, and he was just there. But then, like, he definitely didn't try to kill us. So, and he was there. It's kind of like now, like, the last episode of the last season. Like, he was kind of just, like, there at a time when I think a lot of us needed an outside agent to talk to because we're all acting crazy to each other so and he's the only one that's like you know it's like girl you know what Anton did the other day and you know what my mom did and he's just like I don't care but like well I know that's why I'm going to tell you right now because everybody else already knows but I also can't tell anybody else so that's kind of where he's at I think <laughs> yep. it's just uh I like we'll talk and obviously he's shown that he cares so Hex sees how he uh, has had talked to, like how Thomasina kind of needed him for, for her kind of little freak out moment with the uh, coolest power, by the way. Um, and how he was with caring about Aaron and seeing that there was something wrong there. So Hex definitely notices that. Um, she did not like though, how they left the party I'll just say that they did not like how he took all Tommy and kind of like left, even though all Tommy is like Hex doesn't really like all Tommy either yet. So, um, so yeah, there's, but he's still, he's cooler than we thought he was. I mean, honestly, still like Mel, Mel at least trusts him now enough to know that he, he is not going to go against us, or at least she doesn't feel that he will. And at this point, she feels like if he's going to, that there's enough of us and we know enough about him that it would be easy enough to get him murdered. 
even if we don't do it, right? I mean, we could just literally serve them up on a silver platter to Lydia. You know what I mean? Like, seriously, could do that. But yeah. I'm I'm with you, Hex. Like, same. Like, really, very similar. You you know, you and I had the same energy really the whole time he was over the house. Like, what the fuck is this guy? Yeah, doing? we're like, please. The text oh. message. We said that when the text and the thing, we're like, oh, who who is? Why? Don't talk to us. <laughs> and then. Hey, and then he turned out helping both of us. So, you know, it like he's he's turned he's definitely turned a corner for Mel and and Mel has a soft spot for all Tommy too. So like him being so caretakery of her is like, okay. Yeah, Mel, Mel is Mel is on board the Jackson train now, but I mean, I'm yeah. not. I will only talk to all Tommy through the bug. And I think yeah, I'm gonna that's con- another continue reason that doing that. Head first, like that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I yes, get killed for talking first. to my fundamental parts. Like, I mean, it's not like we talk a lot, but it's like. Can you talk to cells? Can you talk to cells? Can you talk you to cells? Huh? Do I? Can you talk to cells? Like a cell? Like. No. no. Like I'm no. not talk to cells. Well, maybe like a Portuguese man of war because technically they're made of like a living colony of combined creatures. But like not mm. cells. So okay. yeah, yeah that'd probably be too know. small. I know there's limitations to it. Oh but yeah. Imagine talking to coral. I mean, who says I haven't? I've been to the aquarium a lot of times. I get free passes. Literally, my Go boyfriend works there. An but also I just walk in because I just say I've I already have a ticket and I do like a Jedi mind trick every time I go in. It's <laughs> no, not necessary. No, it's just like... <laughs> no Sparatu stuff. <laughs> yeah, just not stuff. Just not shit. Um, so hands on knees, shaking hands, and not shit. Sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yes, someone make that remix. Um, <laughs> gonna Sorry. have that stuck in my head for a week. Uh, so Leona, what ultimately made Thomasina stay in the King and Queen Towers rather than going to Pontevedra? Nope, that's not how to say that. Pontevedra, like she'd planned. Um. I think by that point, she had honestly just gotten tired. Um, it was, it had been a hell of a night as it was. Um, and she, it wasn't anything in particular that Tabitha said. Um, it was just the thought of still traveling, still having to figure everything out suddenly kind of hit her and just like, okay having to get everything together. She always likes to pretend like all of that's very easy. Um, and it's not like coordinating all of that to get her across an ocean in a plane. Like these are all still very tricky things to fine tune. Um, and so finally she was just like, I, okay, the idea of running is still very much a thing for her. Uh, because when she realizes that she's lost control of a situation, she just wants to go and find some other place where she feels like she can gain control. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's entirely what happened. She felt like she had lost control of her body. Like she didn't fully understand what was going on there. She felt like she'd lost control of her identity by virtue of that. She felt like she'd lost control of the coterie, which, I mean, she'd never really thought that she had control like super control over everyone but she thought that she could at least rely on them to do certain things and suddenly that was out the window she didn't feel like she she could rely on them um she'd been through a massive fight she'd eaten somebody um and she genuinely was like when she ate um that secretary it was very much just like a, oh screw you like it was not a well thought out action at all um it's like you can't climb the corporate ladder before i did yeah you know it was personal it turned into something personal oh it did and so, like but it was it still wasn't a well thought out thing it was an entirely emotional decision that did not pan out well so her kind of like going through all of that um was a a clear thing that she'd lost control of the situation. She didn't feel like she could regain her footing. Um, So she immediately wanted to head for home. But yeah, coordinating all of that was just too much. Um, And so being given a place where she still had access to be able to coordinate all of that away from a coterie that she felt like she couldn't rely on. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they can say whatever they want. Her 
stance right now is very much, or her stance at that point was very much, um, everyone seems to be doing their own thing for their own reasons. Um, and it's gonna splinter off really, really quickly. Um, I can't manage that. So I just have to manage my own affairs. Um, so yeah, it, it still felt like, okay, I'm still, I still have access to be able to figure all of this out. Um, but I still have a place that's away from all of the, the mess as far as she thinks it of it, um, to be able to think all of that through. So, yeah. I mean, Hex does appreciate, and that's probably why I don't like Altami is that the last conversation that we had kind of opened up this side of, of Thomasina that Hex wasn't expecting. Yeah. And I felt very like, okay, well, even though I'm, I'm not wanting to be receptive to this dot is a, is a terrible person thing, I appreciate that you're looking out because this obviously means that it's pretty important. So for Altami to come in, even though she is like, you know, doing her best, I guess, she still is responsible for Thomasina not being there. So yeah. it's like, it's hard to like loyalty is, like my loyalty just moved over. So now, you know, I was always loyal to, to Thomasina, but it's like, like I just put a lot of like points into that yeah. and I was like, okay. And now you're like, and man, don't tell sex how you did it because wow, that's gonna be like the worst. But it's like, yeah. but ultimately you're just like, you know, yeet, like got rid of her <laughs> and now I'm just in here trying to, and you're next to be replaced. Like, oh no, 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 no. Like, man, and that first conversation we had at the table, <laughs> with me as all Tommy and you were just like something's up and you guys didn't really immediately launch into that too because doing the meta play of that must have been tricky um but yeah no you guys event you guys found things that were genuinely like oh this is bothersome <laughs> um and let that kind of roll into a conversation after everything with Aaron and that was <laughs> such a chess match of like how can I evade absolute details of what I know? Um, you do a good job cool. sometimes, but like we're already like gunning for it. Yeah, so. there's no avoiding it. <laughs> that was fun. That was a lot of fun. That was, um, that was really fun. So that sort of rolls into how does Hex feel about Dot right now? Does she consider her an actual mother and mentor, or is she uh, on the fence? It's complicated. Again, I, I really do feel like Dot is, and Hex really does feel like Dot is a very strong character. Everything that she has done up to this point has shown that she absolutely is about her business, even if she has to get there a roundabout way. She mm -hmm. survived the previous prince and still in, in her mind. So whatever she's planning, even though she was not prince, she still somehow has a say in this so um and this is still according to her plan so she has a very big plan and i think that uh from one standpoint you know people are like ah you know maybe we can understand the villains and things like that but uh ultimately i kind of want to see how it plays out like maybe dot maybe hex wants to be a bad guy like maybe hex wants to be on just the winning side not not necessarily being the bad guy but just like being on the winning side and dot is like really moving a lot of of things however uh it, it is complex that i was taken from and i haven't really like really hashed out a lot of hex's backstory mm -hmm. so uh like pre-hex story so but she's definitely gonna be pissed that this is how she ended up in this part of her life. I'm not saying that Prehexes, aside from those delicious teddy grams, that Prehexes life was like amazing or even better than this now, but it was still a life. So that, that's going to probably come into play as Hex tries to evaluate like, okay, where am I now? Where was I? These decisions were made without me, but you know, what could I do going forward? Because now I technically have more, I'm stronger in a lot of ways than I was when I was human. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's up in the air, but I like to be mad. So like, I'm mad, but like, you know, 
I'm mad because it sucks, but you know, we'll see how it works out. <laughs> Um, and then that sort of kind of leads into the next one. So Mel's changed a lot in her life. Does she feel the need to do all these changes? Is that her personality pre-embrace or is this something that came sort of as a result of living so long? And is this some way of her escaping memories and past actions or is this something else? What kind of change are you referring to specifically? Changing her hair, changing... You know, I think it's been mentioned that she's uh, regularly recycled her life into some new thing about every 20 to 30 years. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's partially because she is a scene queen and she has to have a scene, right? So, and you can't really have a scene for more than 20 years before you get found out. So there's that, you know, before, before she is no longer, it's very clear that she's no longer who she is. Now, granted, she does have the in with somebody who has vicissitude. So it's like she can you know, basically have, or not vicissitude, whatever is the one, I'm sorry, I don't know the name, whatever is the one that you can do it to somebody else. Um, you know, you guys met uh, Jean-Pierre at, or yeah, at the, at one of our, our awesome in-between games. And so he has always given her an out when she needs it, like a physical out when she needs it. And, you know, sometimes it's been because her, whoever her employer is wants a different look or whatever, Sometimes it's been, um, she needs it in order to be able to move on from a thing and not be recognized by people because she's been in various different scenes. Mm -hmm. And part of it is the only way that you can continue to create revolutions is to find places where there needs to be revolution. And there doesn't need to be revolutions in places more than once typically, right? So moving, I mean, yeah, yes, you know, <laughs> no, totally agreed, uh, you know, but like in her mind, you know, there's a lot of good to be done in a lot of different places and in a lot of different ways. And so she doesn't stay too long in one place. I mean, she's been in America since, oh God, I don't have the stuff in front of me. Like maybe the 1900s, I think. No, no, she came over in the 1800s. She did some work during the revolution, but I think she went back to France. I don't have it in front of me, but um, she didn't have like a haven in the US until. Yeah, no, I mean, like she was just, doing work for the you know for the for the um patriots and, and that kind of thing and she was an ngk a non-governmental kindred yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so so i think really for her it's just a matter of she sees a need and she goes for it and then as far as changing her hair and stuff part of that is is kind of trauma related right because when she was um when she was on the street um pre pre her parents dying but also post her parents dying um you know the only way that she could get away from some of the people who were kind of regularly finding her to rape her was to try to look different mm -hmm. and so she would you know be able to borrow a you know a some breeches and an overcoat mm -hmm. or steal them that's something else too and then, and, or, you know, wear a different kind of dress and do her hair differently and, or start blending into a different type of, you know, group. So she had to change a lot in order just to survive too. So, I mean, it's a little bit of both. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of, it's a little bit of need. It's a little bit of trauma. It's a little bit of, of, um, I would say she, she's a little bit incapable of, of sitting still, but I mean, she's been a, alive for you know a couple hundred years so it's like you know I I couldn't imagine her seeing there be a benefit and being too rooted somewhere because there it's not going to last long I mean every 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 society crumbles every culture ends so for her it's like no point in getting too comfortable you know and in her case too comfortable what she's been she's been in Atlanta specifically since like the 60s so that's like a long time in terms of other kindred maybe, but for her, it's a drop in the bucket, you know? And, and if, if it were to be found that there was somewhere else that needed her more, you know, then I think that she would be apt to leave, you know? But right now Atlanta is a absolute dumpster fire. So she feels needed there. Not by necessarily needed by anybody in particular, but very self-righteous need to make things better. 
awesome. And on that note, I think that was a great answer. On that note, thank you so much for joining us for Blood Bonding. Don't forget to check out rustedicon.net for our Rinashri Camarilla glasses. Don't forget to check out atlbynight.net for our Lost Child or Play Guide or patreon.com slash ATL by night if you want to join our play by post server or join our free fan discord server if you just want to chat and share memes with each other. Um, also, there are going to be more links in our T public include or in our link tree, including our T public and more ATL by night content. Thank you so much, ladies, for chatting with me tonight. And we love you. Be safe. Bye. Bye. Thank you.